God bless you. So happy to be with you today. Uh, why don't you uh, be seated and uh, we'll jump right into the service today. I'm excited to share the word with you. Uh, my name is Joel. Uh, we love being here in Flagstaff, love your city. Uh, we explored all around Arizona uh, yesterday and Flag is our absolute favorite place. Um, every once in a while Scottsdale is okay. It's the right, in the right weather, with the right weather. But, but of course I might feel differently in February. I haven't been here in February yet, so uh, we'll see anyway. Uh, we're happy to be here. Love you guys. I want to jump right into the message. I have a message I feel like is going to uh, really be beneficial and helpful to you. Uh, welcome all of you online that are with us online, and we know that you have uh, great things in store for you as well. You're a part of this church, and you're part of a great church. Uh, the title of the message today is Inspired. Inspired. And I just want to open by asking you that, a question. What do you think of when you hear that word? What pops into your head when you hear the word inspired? Do you think of an artist? Maybe an inventor, maybe an athlete, someone that hits a certain level of accomplishment. Do you think of creativity? You could think of any of those things and you wouldn't be wrong, yeah. right? Yeah. Because inspired is something that we all at certain times feel and there are times where we don't feel, right? Uh, if you're an artist or if you're a writer, I know Pastor Landon is working on his book and there are moments as someone that's written books, there are moments where you just are literally caught up and you can't, your fingers can't keep up. And there are other moments where you're stuck. They call it writer's block, right? And so there are moments, whether you're a painter or an inventor or, a, or, or maybe a school teacher, if you're dealing with preschoolers, you better figure out a way to be inspired, right? Uh, we need this. And, and when you think of it, do you think about the creativity, there's a really important reason that inspired is created to creativity because the word inspired comes from a combination of two words. It's the word in and spirit. In spirit is where the word inspired comes from. So when you are in an inspired place, you're connected to your spirit self. Can I tell you, very important for you to understand that you are spirit. The true you is spirit. The eternal you is spirit. You are not your body. You're not your personality. You're not your emotions. Thank God we're not our emotions. Our emotions can change so fast. You are spirit. Your true identity is spirit. Before you ever had a body, you existed as spirit. God created you as a part of himself. And when it was time for you to enter the earth, he released that part of himself into the earth. You're part of him. God is your identity. And when he returns and takes you, your natural body doesn't get to go. In fact, you get a new body, a glorified body. My body's going to be taller than Pastor Landon's. <laughs> Big old guns on it, man. No love handles at all, right? You got to prophesy your spiritual body and make, make sure it's a good one next time, right? It means in spirit. You are spirit. You're not your body. You're not your emotions. John chapter 4 verse 23 says, Yet a time is coming, Jesus is declaring this, and now has come when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. See, the reason we think of creativity when we think of inspired is because you're connecting to the creator. The creator is your, connect, is your connection. And you are made in his image and are being transformed according to his likeness, right? So you are a creator. You are a creator. We all create in different ways. Some people create with computers. They create with code. Other people create with wood or with paint or with whatever or with metal. People create in lots of different ways. Some people create with words. Some people create with sport. And there are times, I can tell you, as a, Pastor Landon mentioned, as a fighter, almost every single time that I had the purest, most beautiful knockout, it was not planned. It was, it was, it was, a, it was a beautiful, inspired moment of violence that the Lord helped to create. <laughs> And, and, and people are like, how did you do that? I'm like, I don't know. It just happened. It was this inspired automatic reflex of, of the art coming together. It happens in lots of different ways, guys. So we think of stories in the Bible. You think of David and Goliath. That was an inspired moment 
where David had practiced, 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 practiced something in the natural. See, where people miss it is when they think that life is all spiritual or all natural. And I'm telling you, it's both. What I want to talk to you about today is the reason for the Holy Spirit. What is the reason for the Holy Spirit? Can I tell you, the Holy Spirit being given as a gift to you to live inside of your natural body as the temple of God where God himself resides by his spirit, it is the fulfillment of the original design of God for the purpose of mankind, that God would walk with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day in the garden. He wanted to be with man, but this is a more perfect opportunity because it's not God with us, Emmanuel. Now it's God in us. God in us. See, in the garden, they had access to God only at the cool of the day. God liked the shade. He didn't want to be out there in the heat. And he would come and enjoy the cool. Was it morning and evening? We don't know. But it was the cool of the day. Now with God in us, we have access 24-7 365 days a year, you have access that was greater than the original design. Jesus didn't come to restore it back to just the way it was. Jesus came to make it even better. And when I tell you the work of Jesus Christ is fulfilled, let me help you understand this. There's only one thing left for Jesus to do. That is to return. That's it. He's done everything else. He came, he lived, he died, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. And then he released the Holy Spirit and the gifts of God down into the earth to come and live inside of you. It's the finished work of Jesus Christ that you are now like him. It's a big deal. It's a really big deal. Why was Jesus so adamant that his disciples had to wait in Jerusalem to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit? This is why. Because you can't be like Jesus unless you have his Holy Spirit in you. Jesus didn't do a single miracle, not one, until he was baptized by his cousin John and he came up out of the water and they saw the Holy Spirit descend like a dove, rest on his shoulder and remain on him. And he went out from there in the power of the Holy Spirit and began to do miraculous works all over. It says in scripture that Jesus had the fullness, the entirety of the Godhead in his in himself, in his bodily form. That's what it says in the book of Colossians. All of God inside of Jesus' body. See, you don't don't have all of him. You have access to all of him, but you don't have all of the Holy Spirit. We are called partakers of the divine nature. You are a shareholder. You have a stake. You have a portion of the divine nature. You don't have it all. You don't have the whole of the Holy Spirit, all of the Holy Spirit living inside of you. You have a portion of it. We share it together. We are shareholders. We are partakers of it. That's why we need each other. That's why we need to come together as the church. It's wonderful that we have this Zoom technology and online and stream and all that. And thank you, all of you that are connected that way through Zoom and stream and all of our online relationships and families and all that kind of stuff. That's wonderful. That's great. But we need each other. We need to share presence with each other too. So be here too or come together and form groups too. Do something because there's someone else that has the part of the Holy Spirit in them that you need. You don't have it all of yourself. We have to be connected together. We have to be one together. Jesus' prayer, the last prayer before Jesus was taken captive was make them one, like we are one. You can't be one when you're separated. can't be one when you're separated. You have a divine advantage in life. People that do not have Christ do not have your advantage. People that do not have the infilling of the Holy Spirit Do not have your advantage. Jesus said in John 14, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray. That means ask. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. That is the word parakletos. It means an advocate, a helper, a lawyer, someone that comes alongside, someone that's got your back. That's what it means. Your legal defense, your helper, and he will abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world can not receive because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him for, watch, he dwells with you and he will be in you. 
I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Jesus described a divine opportunity that his disciples had not experienced yet. They had the Holy Spirit with them. The entirety of the Holy Spirit was inside of Jesus. And they had the Holy Spirit with them. And they were already doing miracles. They were already casting out demons. They were already preaching the gospel. They were already healing the sick. They were already doing all of that. And they only had the Spirit with them. And Jesus said, there's another experience coming that you cannot miss. You have to have this. You don't, don't, don't stay home. Go to Jerusalem. Be in the place. Because on this specific hour, this day, this time, I'm going to release to you the promise that God has for you. Yeah. It's God's super added to your natural. Amen. So you still have to be great naturally. But it's not only about your natural. And you need to be great spiritually. But it's not only about the spiritual. I grew up in a church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Pastor Willie George. Some of you remember the Gospel Bill show from way back in the day. Pastor Willie George, he would say all the time that some people are so heavenly minded that they're no earthly good. So spiritually minded, they can't connect to anything on the earth. So weird. You, listen, it's about supernatural, not super freak. Some people just get freaky with it. And they can't relate to anybody, and no one wants to be around them. Right. You ever been to a family reunion and you got the one weird, weird relative that nobody wants to be near them? They're just weird? <laughs> Jesus wasn't that guy. Right. Everybody wanted to be around Jesus. Yeah. The children flocked to Jesus. He wasn't super freak. He was supernatural. Amen. He wasn't weird. He attracted children. <laughs> children can sniff out a weirdo. <laughs> can sniff it out. And Jesus had the ability to be fully super and fully natural at the same time. And part of this, guys, part of this is for us to realize and understand why you're given the Holy Spirit. You live in Flagstaff, Arizona, in the surrounding areas here. Why did God call Pastor Landon and Emily to this city? This is a hard city to build a church. In Texas, when you meet people, you ask them, hey, where do you go to church? And 50% of them say where they go. And then the other 50% might go if you ask them to come, maybe. But in Flagstaff, they go, church? I heard one pastor say that this is where churches go to die. And pastors go to get ground up into hamburger. But God called them here. Why? Because there's something specific he wants to do here. And he put the spirit inside of them to do it. A couple weeks ago, we celebrated Pentecost Sunday. It's one of the most important celebrations and holidays inside of all of our Christian faith. We think of Christmas and Easter, but Pentecost is just as big. And I want you to understand why. It's wonderful that Jesus was born. It's wonderful that he died and he rose again. But if he didn't pour out his Holy Spirit upon us, he wouldn't be done. His work isn't finished. He had to pour the Spirit out. And the, the holiday, Pentecost, Pentecost means 50 days. That's what the word means, 50 days. It is in the Jewish culture, the Feast of Weeks. It is exactly seven weeks after Passover. Passover is when they celebrate freedom because it was when the uh, lamb, the innocent lamb, the blood was put on the doorpost and that the angel of death passed over and didn't kill them and they were freed as slaves and they went out into the wilderness and they began their trek of discovery to find the promised land. So Passover was the biggest and first festival for all of the Israelite people. 50 days later, the second holiday started. 50 days later, Moses walks down the mountain with the Ten Commandments and the law. It is a celebration of the giving of the law. It was exactly 50 days from the night of Passover to the walking down the mountain with the Ten Commandments. 50 days. Jesus is our Passover lamb. He died for our sins on Passover. And exactly 50 days later, the Holy Spirit blows into the city 
on the day that all of the Jews are there celebrating the giving of the Torah, Jesus pours out his Holy Spirit so that now we celebrate the fulfillment of the law, the fulfillment of all things. It's not just the getting of the law, it's the fulfillment of the law because you don't have it in yourself to fulfill the law on your own. You can't be righteous on your own. You can only be righteous through the gift of Jesus Christ and faith therein. So here we see Acts chapter 1, verse 5, I believe it says, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my father, that my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him. Verse 6. Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said, It's not for you to know the times of the dates. The Father is set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Why did Jesus give the Holy Spirit? He explains it right here. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a baptism of power and boldness. Pentecost is about power and boldness. It's about receiving the power and the boldness of Jesus Christ and his spirit in your life. But watch. His disciples, when being told about the Holy Spirit coming, their only question was, Jesus, are you going fi- to fix the political problem that we have now? Your Holy Spirit's coming. Are you going to fix our political mess that we have right now? We don't like our president. We don't like our Senate. We don't like our, our, our representatives. We don't like, we got a mess. Will you, when your spirit comes, will, will you fix the political problem? Will you get rid of Rome? Will you get rid of all these, these uh, sellouts to the nation of Rome? Will you get rid of Herod, this evil king? Will you deal with our political problems when the Holy Spirit comes? And Jesus says, you're missing the whole point. <laughs> it's not about the politics. It's about the power. Oh. Guys, we have been led astray we've been led astray as the church so wrapped up in the politics when jesus wants us focused on the power we spent four years five years six years however long you spent wringing your hands about the political mess of our nation it's a mess guess what it may stay a mess we don't have control over that can we pray yes but is that supposed to be our focus no no but we're wrapped up in it we're focused on the wrong thing. Yeah. And the devil loves to divide us yeah. over false identities. Yeah. False identities. What's the big deal about the Holy Spirit? It's, it's God's Spirit living in you. It's your one and only true identity being revealed to you. And the world, the enemy, has us wrapped up in gender identity. Yeah. Sexual identity. Racial identity. All of these temporary things. Guess what? Your color doesn't count in heaven. Your your gender doesn't count in heaven. Your sexual preference doesn't matter in heaven. It's not eternal. It is a temporary thing. You may not believe it now, but there will be a time in your life when you go, eh. Because it won't matter anymore. But we're led astray Focused on decoys. And we're supposed to be focused on the power. What's the power for? What's the boldness for? It's so that we can declare God's truth in the earth. He said, I'm going to give you power so you can be my witnesses. Do you know what the word, the word for power there, he's going to fill you with power, is the word dunamis. It means dynamite. It's where we get dynamite. It's explosive power. That's the power you have. And what's the purpose of it? So you can be his witnesses. What is the word witness in the Greek? The word that Jesus used was translated in the Greek, martus. It means martyrs. Guys, this is not a fun sales pitch. I'm going to give you dynamite power so that you can die for me. That's the pitch. That was the sales pitch. That wouldn't fill the altars today. But in this day and age, they recognized that they were given a divine opportunity to tap into a divine nature, to have a divine advantage so that they could live a life that was elevated above all the political problems of their day and age and they could exist inside of a problem and thrive because they had the power. What else is the power for? 
is so you can face the dangers of life. Guys, life is dangerous. Jesus didn't promise you daffodils and cotton candy and an easy road. He promised you tribulation. He said, in this world, you will have tribulation. You're going to have tough times. Tough times in your marriage, tough times with your kids, tough times at work, tough times with finance, tough times with education. You're going to have tough times. But take heart, Jesus said, for I have overcome the world. And you're given the power so that you can tap in so that you can overcome. Here's another reason. To release miracle faith. The power of the Holy Spirit so that you can be one that releases miracle faith into desperate situations when people don't have the answers, but you recognize the answer lives in you. You don't have the answer in and of yourself. You have the answer living in you. See, when this switch flipped in my brain, I stopped telling people, I'll be praying for you. And I started telling people, let's pray right now. Let's pray right now. Why? Do I have the answer? No. But the answer lives in me. I have access to the answer by the power of the Holy Spirit. I have, answer, I have access to the power that can, that can be a, a problem solver inside of your life. So let's pray right now. Another reason for the power and the boldness. To stand up for what's right. To stand up for what's right. Christian people should stand up for what's right. And that takes power and boldness in the face of a wicked world, an insidious world that wants to silence you as a believer. Everyone else can have an opinion, but not the Christians. Right? Nobody's persecuting the Buddhist church. Nobody's persecuting the Muslim church. They know better. They'll come against the Christians though. Because they think Christians are all about turning the other cheek. Listen, that, 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 that idea... God didn't call a pansy pastor up to Flagstaff, Arizona. He called landed by God Merrill up to Flagstaff, Arizona. Not a pansy pastor. Man, he'll get in your business. Christian, this is a misconception. Jesus was not a pansy. Jesus was a tough dude. People were afraid of Jesus. Jesus, imagine. Jesus walks into the temple... The temple would be like our capital. Walking into the capital, turning over everything, and setting up shop and not leaving. It's my house now. And they couldn't do anything about it. They were terrified of the power inside of Jesus. He was a powerful man, full of the Holy Spirit, fully man, fully God, and no one could touch him. They would want to kill him, try to kill him, and he would walk right through them. And they couldn't physically touch him. I read a book years ago called uh, The Acts of Pilate, uh, the Acta Pilati. And it was uh, a translation out of an ancient manuscript believed to be Pontius Pilate's uh, actual journal. And in the journal, Pontius Pilate describes Jesus. And in the description, he said that I had never seen more authority inside of the eyes of any other man in my entire life. This is someone who met the emperor. This is someone that, that oversaw portions of the Roman uh, Empire. And when he looked in the eyes of Jesus, was terrified by the authority he saw. Jesus was not a pansy. Christians are not... Listen, there, there's a time to turn the other cheek. Because you have two cheeks. And there's a time to fight. And the Holy Spirit will lead you. I'm going to give you a couple, of, couple, couple examples, if I can. Of, of being led by the Spirit, of, of being, uh, being inspired by the Spirit. Uh, I, um, I, I've, taken, I've had lots of opportunities to minister to lots of different people. I, I, um, I look for those opportunities. One time I was getting a massage, and, and I was brand new. It was a gym I used to go to, and I'm getting a massage, and I, I, you know, I'm in there, and I'm waiting. A new person comes in, a lady I'd never met, met or knew or whatever. And so I'm just laying there under the sheet, and I got my face in the little thingy, in a little canal or whatever. And she starts the massage, and she, her opening line is, you know, I'm a psychic. <laughs> and instantly I said, wow, that's crazy, so am I. <laughs> she's, I'm like, she's like, really? I said, yeah, I am. I just call it something different. Really? What's that? I said, 
I have a special gift that God will show me things in people and I can see things about people and I can tell them about who they really are. Really? She says, yes. Well, did he show you something about me? I said, yes, he did. She said, will you tell me? She, this is, I'm getting a massage. This is not normal. I said, are you sure you want to hear it? She said, yes. And I start, prof- I've got my face in the thing. And I'm prophesying through the paper. Getting a massage. Because I told her I'm a psychic too. And dude, she's crying and she ends up coming to church. Because it's a creative moment. Okay? It's just a creative moment. It's about being inspired. It's about being connected to the spirit. A couple days ago, we went to Jerome, right? Jerome, Arizona. Didn't know it was the wickedest town on earth. That's where we got to hang out a little bit. And I was looking at the history and the culture. And we were there at the little restaurant up on the top and walked out and and walked into these people. They were uh, the Longhorn Paranoia or Paranormal Group. Not Paranoia. There might be some Paranoia too. Paranormal Group. It's a reality TV show. And they were there in Jerome specifically doing exorcisms and ghost chasing and all this kind of stuff. And, And we start a conversation And I said, wow, that's really cool. I've done tons of exorcisms. I know lots about this stuff. Like, really? And we start a conversation back and forth, and they got a little little intern sitting, and she's like, yeah, she's really having a hard time because she's never seen stuff like this, and it's really affecting her in a bad way. I said, really? I said, is it okay if I pray with you right now? Because I have authority over these bad things. And will you pray? And I'm so here I am now squatting down with paranormal people, ghost chaser buster people. And, and, and I'm like, and now I'm playing, I'm laying hands on someone and praying and releasing the peace of Jesus Christ. And I literally watched as the peace of Jesus Christ watched over this tormented little girl. She was a college kid or something. I don't know what a little girl, my age, they're all little at this point. Come on, guys, I'm talking about creative ways. I'm talking about, I'm talking about boldness. Let me give you another led by the spirit moment. Our last moments, we went to L.A. for a couple of days on vacation before we came here. Our oldest daughter, Sydney, is going to be in your internship this summer. And so uh, we were getting a couple of vacation days in and then coming up here. And the very last stop that we made in, uh, in L.A. was at, down Melrose Drive. We were just going to T-shirt shop a little bit. We were with another family friend, and, and we had eight people, eight bags of luggage, purses, backpacks, everything in the car. We go literally into a T-shirt shop. Um, Rob comes back out because daughter, his daughter was sick and they sit in the car where they're gone maybe 20 minutes come back to the car and all of a sudden somebody notices oh the, the whole back hatch is open they didn't even notice all of our stuff is stolen everything in a matter of moments eight suitcases four or five backpacks all the purses everything stolen and in a moment I mean, we're sitting there and I'm like oh my it's like a bad dream I mean, our family is in turmoil. It's like everyone's massively upset. You can imagine Sydney's, I mean, her passport, her phone, her everything, the whole thing, everything she needs for two months in Flagstaff, Arizona, all of it gone, everything, nothing left. And I literally, I'm sitting there, I'm like, Father, what, what do we do? What do we do now? And I instantly had a thought because one of the issues was, Sydney's phone, her back, she left her phone in her backpack that had her wallet and her driver's license and her passport and everything she used to go on the missions trip and all that, all the documents were all in there. And I'm like, hold on, did you say your phone is in that backpack? Yeah. I get a divine idea, a God idea called Life 360. If you don't have teenage children driving, you don't understand the value of Life 360. But as a dad, my daughter, every time she leaves, I'm I'm, I'm biting my nails and watching my teenager drive around town on on the GPS, and I get a God idea. What if we could find where they are? And I pull up the phone, and I see the robber driving down the road with all of our stuff. So we jump in the car, let's go. Because we're from Texas. You don't mess with Texas. It's our stinking slogan. Don't mess with Texas. That's our slogan. It's our state deal. And, 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 we're, and so we're on the phone and we're calling the cops and the cops won't help us. 
Do you know what they look like? No. Do you know what the vehicle making model is? No. We can't do anything. We can't help you until you know you have whatever. We can't send anyone. Where are we going to send them to? We can't help you. I'm talking 30 minutes. We're following these people through L.A. down into south downtown L.A. Not a good place you want to be. And we come into this place, and I'm yelling at the cop on the phone. I, I'm, I'm tapped into the Holy Spirit, but I'm still got a little, you know. And I'm like, well, if you're not going to help us, we'll just take care of it ourselves. And we pull up. I'm looking on the map in the exact little road, and it's like there's the dot, and there's a car. Here's the road. There's a car. There's a dot. And I jump out of the car. Jen starts praying in tongues real loud. And, and, and I jump out, and Rob jumps out, and I start walking, and Rob goes to go into a store to ask if anybody sees anything, and I see two dudes walking toward the back of the trunk, and I pick up my pace. And sure enough, they pop the trunk, and all of our stuff is right there. And I'm right, dude, I'm in this dude's face, like, faster than you could ever imagine. And I'm like, in this, I'm like, that's my stuff. That's my daughter's stuff. That's his daughter's stuff. That's my stuff. Give me my stuff. And this guy's like, okay, man, okay, 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 man, okay, okay. And we literally, guys, we got all of our stuff back. All of our stuff back. All of it. Didn't lose a penny. Didn't lose anything. In fact, Jennifer accidentally grabbed a charger out that ended up being that. We got some of his stuff. (laughs) Thought it was ours. We robbed the robber, praise Jesus. Well, that doesn't sound very spiritual, Joel. It would have ruined my kid's whole summer. Turn the other cheek. She only had one passport, one license, one credit card, one error. She had one bag. There's no other cheek to turn. As Christians, we have to know when it's time to be bold. When it's time to go get your stuff, okay? Because you're not called to be a sissy. You're called to be men and women of God that will be risk takers, that will obey the voice of God, that will go out on adventures. The people that followed Jesus were gutsy people. They were sailors. They were hard workers. They were risk takers. And God is calling this church to be willing to follow a radical leader that's got crazy faith, filled with the Holy Spirit, his wife filled with the Holy Spirit, ready for war, ready for battle, ready to take that next mountain, ready to go reach this whole city, has a vision. There's not a single church. Is there a, is there a church in the city bigger than a 1,000? One? Maybe close? But your vision isn't for 1,000. You've got a vision for thousands. You've got a vision for churches. He's got radical, bold, crazy vision. And there's a reason you're called to be a part of it. The power of the Holy Spirit in your life so that you can be filled with the Spirit, be led by the Spirit. And I just want to pray with you in this moment to invite the Holy Spirit in. You may already be filled with the Spirit, but I want, I want you to pray with me to invite this, this gutsy pioneer faith, this willing to go and, 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 and charge the hill, take the mountain kind of faith. Holy Spirit boldness to come on your life. Well, you will stand up for what's right. You'll boldly declare uh, the truth of Jesus Christ. You'll look for opportunities to pray with people and to minister to, with, to people and to share the love of Jesus Christ. You won't be afraid. You won't be timid. You have not been given a spirit of fear. Not been given a spirit of fear. Pastor Landon told me the other day, I didn't know this. He said, do you know how many times the, the phrase fear not is in scripture? 365 times. One for every single day of your year. Fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. The scripture says that you have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and soundness of mind. The enemy wants to steal your power. He wants to steal your love. He wants to steal your soundness of mind. And fear is the way he does it. Fear and doubt work hand in hand. What's the very first trick? The very first trick that the devil pulled in scripture. The very first one. Did God really say? Did God really say that? Fear. I've been lied to. Doubt. I can't trust my father. It's his number one trick. It's fear and doubt. They go hand in hand. Did God really say? The most important thing that you have in your life is what you know God has said over your life. I know who I am. I know what I'm called to do. I know where I'm called to do it. And I will never back down. That's That's the mantra of my life. That's the mantra of my life. I know who I am. I know what God called me to do. I know who where he called me to do it. And I will never back down. 
from what I know he's called me to do and where he's called me to do it, who he's called me to be. I'll never back down. It's holy boldness. Would you just stay with me and just lift your hands as I pray over you? Father, in the name of Jesus, would you release your holy boldness upon every person under the sound of my voice in rooms across America, in cars, wherever they are listening or streaming, but right here in this moment, holy boldness in this room. Holy Spirit, would you fill them with power, love, soundness of mind, that they would walk in your spirit, be led by your spirit, be on the adventure of a lifetime to move your kingdom forward, to advance your kingdom. Be excellent in the natural, whatever their vocation, whatever their hobbies, whatever the things that they do in the natural realm, be excellent in those. But your Holy Spirit added to it with a superpower so that they could be distinct and dynamic above the norm, above the ordinary. They're called to be supernatural for you, Father, would you release that power, release that boldness, release that courage upon them, Father, that they live a daring life for you. No fear, no fear, no fear, no fear, no fear. We come against anxiety. We come against those emotional disorders. The enemy seeks to create anxiety and oppression and depression and all types of confusion and all types of divisions of your mind. He wants you thinking one way and another. He wants you up and down. He wants you all over the place. And Father, right now in the name of Jesus, according to the authority of the name of Jesus, we come against every emotional disorder, every emotional, every disease of the mind, every disease of the brain, every chemical imbalance, every single part of those things where the enemy has tried to plague people's minds we come against it by the name of Jesus and we release the mind of Christ. Come on, right now, put your hands on your brain right now. Put your hands on your head. Father, right now, we release the mind of Christ upon your people, the mind of Christ upon your children, that they will think how you think. They will see how you see. They will speak how you speak. They will walk in your ways because they are tapped into your mind by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I release your peace. I release your peace. I release your peace. Peace unto you, Jesus says. My peace I give you. Supernatural peace upon you right now. No fear, no worry, no doubt. Every need is met. Every need is met. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Look at me one more, one more second. Look at me one more second. Jesus didn't promise you easy. He didn't promise you pleasant. He's going to call you into difficult things to do. That's the adventure. He's going to put you in over your head. That's the thrill. It's terrifying. It's scary. I know. You feel out of control. I get it. But that's where he's called you. He's calling you to the deep. He's calling you to step out of the boat. He's not calling you to stay in your place of comfort. He's not calling you, to, calling you to stay in your place of, pre, of pleasure. He's not calling you to stay in your place where it's all what you want, when you want. He's not calling you to that place of, of, of just chill, just relax and chill. He's calling you to the adventure. He's calling you to the deep. He's calling you to step out of the boat. He's calling you to be willing to do something that your natural flesh isn't willing, doesn't want. But he's calling you to it because there's a reward in it. And there's a great work that he has for you in your life. And if you'll just say yes, you'll just say yes, it won't be easy. It won't be easy, but it'll be worth it. We're so glad you joined us today. If you made a spiritual decision, whether that was dedicating your life to Christ or rededicating your life to Christ, send us an email at info at weirbridge.church and let us know you made that spiritual decision. Also, if you're joining our Bridge Church family online for the first time, we have a very special gift for you. Send us an email at info at wearebridge.church to share some information on where we can send you that gift. We're so glad you joined us today, and we can't wait to see you soon. Be sure to stay connected, because we're so much better. Together. We want you.